this is Thine McDad here. I um, wanted to do a video on what's referred to as narcissistic fog. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a um, strange aspect of dealing with someone with narcissism and an aspect that's not um, discussed much. Um, what happened and what happened to me and um, what has happened to a lot of other people is that um, you know when you're in a narcissistic relationship um, there is a period of a phase if you will that's commonly called devalue um, during that phase um, the games played by the narcissist are in full effect so a common one is what's referred to as uh, breadcrumbing where you might have a situation where you are you know, um, you know, told or you know, technically in a relationship with this person, but at the same time, you only connect with them or see them or really speak to them at an emotional level once every, let's say, four to five days. And during those previous four days, you're being given only breadcrumbs, just the bare minimum amount of communication and um, let's you know say like emotional indication um, to keep you hooked or engaged. Um, and then after the four days of breadcrumbing, um, you'll have what is you know commonly called love bombing where all of a sudden the narcissist says, I missed you, um, I love you so much, you're you know, um, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, um, oh my gosh, let's go dancing, let's go to the movies, let's go um, you know, check out this new um, bar, or this new restaurant, or you know, do something exciting and fun, or you know, why don't you come over and you know, we'll net, you know, watch Netflix and chill. And, you know, because you're in the middle of this, you're like, oh, that, that sounds great. And so you might um, connect with that person at a deep emotional level. Um, you're having fun. They're giving you attention, affection, and, um, you know, connecting with you on that deep level. And so you know, at that point you're in the middle of it and you're like, okay, th I'm in a real relationship. This person obviously loves me. Um, you know, they are showing me through their, you know, their actions that they love me and that they're emotionally connected to me. And then the next day, um, it's odd. They, you know, during this phase, they will what can almost feel like ghost you and th that you know um, whiplash is confusing because the previous day you were so well connected at this deep emotional level and you're thinking hey we're on the same page we have the same goals you know we want the same things out of the relationship you know, we're in alignment, you know, we're, we're both moving forward. And so you, you feel like that's going to continue. And in fact, the opposite happens. And all of a sudden, they're distant, they're, they feel a million miles away, there is no emotional connection at all. Um, communication might be minimal. Um, to the extreme like again it goes immediately back to the breadcrumbing to where the narcissist is giving you the bare minimum just to keep you kind of engaged and so because of that whiplash um, you feel you know, like you're on a roller coaster. I mean, your your head is spinning. And so there's confusion. 
um, from that where you're like, okay, yesterday we were well connected. It was like we were in the honeymoon period again. Everything's great. And then 24 hours later, it's like they're a million miles away. And so that, you know, that adds one layer of confusion. Um, another um, layer of confusion that produces this like narcissistic fog is that um, the narcissistic or the narcissist mask starts to come off. And what I mean by that is that you will notice that their words and actions start diverging. They are no longer in alignment. And the, the narcissist will be telling you one thing, being, you know, being like, hey, you know, we're a team, we're there, you know, you're the best thing that ever happened to me, you know, we're totally, um, you know, going forward in the same direction. But their actions are going in the opposite direction. Um, you know, they, they might be telling you, oh, you know, how much they, they love you and then putting no effort into the relationship and no effort into connecting emotionally with you, you know, no effort into any of that, um, you know, meeting your wants, meeting your needs, you know, trying to, um, have time you know, with you, it's just not there. All you hear are these words and promises, again, for that four days, and then on the fifth day, they show up. And again, that 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 other, you know, that second, you know, second layer of, of confusion that adds to the narcissistic fog is that disconnect between <clears throat> their words and their actions. And um, there's a phrase, you know, um, you know, boiling a frog, where if you put a frog in a cold pot of water and slowly raise the temperature up very, very slowly, you will literally raise the water to the point that it's boiling and the frog will not jump out because the change has been so gradual. That is what being in a relationship with a narcissist is like. It's um, slow and insidious. It, the change happens so gradually that you don't realize it's happening. And um, you know the, the way that I'd heard it described um, you know, beautifully is where Imagine you are with someone you met and you're in a relationship with them and they take your hand and they say, Hey, let's go in this field. And you're, you may question, you know, um, okay, you know, um, I trust you. And so you walk into this field and as you walk further into the field, you know, so a little bit of mist on the ground. And you may just kind of notice it and just nod your head and tell yourself, well, you know, I, I, this person tells me that they love me and I, I have no reason not to trust them. And they take you um, farther into that field. And the mist becomes more of a fog and it, it rises up and you become a little bit more concerned to the point where you might bring it up and say, Hey, do you notice this, you know, this fog is starting to, you know, grow that, you know, that's a little bit concerning and they'll, you know, brush it off, say, no, no, not a problem, not a problem. And because they say they love you and you still trust them, you, push your concerns to the side and you keep following them into the field. And then the fog continues to rise and thicken until 
it's everywhere and it's pervasive and you can't um, you know just brush it aside and so you you go to your partner you know who's who's holding on to your hand you say we need to go back you know there's all this fog here and I you know I can barely see and they say I love you you need to trust me and they might say you know stop being in so insecure stop being um, you know a baby you know gr you know grow up start stop being immature stop being codependent you know they'll they'll use every trick in the book to just kind of shut you up about your concerns and because of where you are you're not and say okay and then you go a little bit farther into the fog and the narcissist takes their hand out of yours and you're left alone in this fog and you, you can't see anything and you you know cry out and you say you know hey you know where you know where are you what's going on and you, you hear a voice and it says hey i love you trust me um you know just you know don't worry don't worry about it and you say okay well you know which way is north which way is south and they'll say this this way's north and so you turn and you start walking that way and then they'll say you know they'll be behind you and they'll say this way's north and so you turn around and go that way until you are so completely lost in this fog and the narcissist at that point is nothing more than a voice they are not touching you. They are not in your presence. They are not connected to you at all. They are a wispy voice that you know is basically playing a game with you at that point. They just kind of lead you in the direction that they want. And as always, if you bring up your concerns, they'll say, I love you. You know, you just need to trust me. <clears throat> and um, that's very much the you know a, a great analogy or, or metaphor for the narcissistic fog is that because of the gaslighting, the manipulation, the divergence between um, their promises and their actions, um, the circular arguments, um, the you know changing you know, goal, moving the goalposts as far as like the relationship goes, you are so confused um, and your your mind is turned, you know, completely upside down and around at that point. You just don't realize what's happening. And at that point, you just... You know, almost like a zombie, you just kind of move forward um, by inertia. And the only thing that keeps you going, and this is something that I've, I've heard from other people that have dealt with narcissists, is this um, hope. You hope that the person that you knew during the honeymoon period, or the person that you originally met, um, that they'll come back or you'll hope that you can work things out with them and that you can talk to them and have these deep, you know, emotionally connected conversations and fix the relationship and get things back to normal. Um, <clears throat> and because of that misguided hope, you just keep, going through the fog um, on purpose and it's not until you either reach a point where you realize that you're being led when you realize 
this is a game. Like, my partner is just this wispy voice that leads me where they want me to go. That That's it. And that is the extent of the relationship at that point. Um, you know, uh, usually at that point, you're a, a, literally a toy. You're an accessory for the narcissist. Um, at this point, they really don't feel anything towards you. Um, you're a piece of furniture. You're someone, or I should say something, that they play with for a little bit. They get bored. And they put you on a shelf and they'll keep you on that shelf for like say four days and they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm bored. I'm going to go, I'm going to go play. And they take you down from the shelf and play with you for a while. And you know, it's fine, but you know, it gets boring. And as time goes on, they're going to grow more and more bored with playing with you. And you're going to spend more and more time on the shelf. And, um, finally, you know, hopefully you reach a point long before that, where you kind of realize what's going on and, and leave. But very often, um, you know, it doesn't happen until you've been discarded when the narcissist just says, you know, I've got better toys. I don't, I don't need you anymore. Bye. And discards you, ends the relationship, and at that point, you start to um, clear your thinking. Because that manipulation is no longer in your life and impacting you on a daily basis, the fog starts to lift. And um, I, I know from my own personal experience, that's what happened to me. Um, I realized what was happening to a smaller extent towards the end of my relationship. And because of that, I started pushing the door. It's like the door, you know, close the door, or open the door. But, you know, this can't continue like this. And the relationship ended. And after it ended the fog continued to dissipate. And I started realizing just how long I'd been taken into that fog and how far I'd been taken into it and how um, bad things had gotten. And just kind of the, you know, you know, being out of it and then, you know, contrasting like the last day of the relationship to say, you know, the end of the honeymoon period and just the night and day change. And I'm not talking about like your typical, you know, you're in a relationship and you, you get um, familiar with your partner that happens. Um, but I mean, I, I was married for nearly 20 years and I, knew my wife five, seven years before we got married. And so we grew familiar, but we loved each other and we had like an emotional connection through the marriage for decades. So that, that that's not the same. Like what happened with me and this, you know, past relationship with the covert narcissist it was a much quicker, steeper um, decline. And that said, it was still slow enough and gradual enough that I did not notice at the time. And it wasn't until I was able to contrast the th way things were at the end with the way things were earlier on and just see how um, there was such a huge chasm between the two. Um, but that, you know, that's a little bit of, of um, a tangent. You know, I just wanted to touch on this issue of narcissistic fog and that, um, you know, I, I feel like sometimes people will um, say nudge like their best friend or a sibling and say, you need to get out of that relationship. They are a narcissist. They are manipulating you. 
and the person you know the person you're trying to help just doesn't see it and it's it's not because they're dumb or you know or is it's something they wouldn't normally recognize they're being manipulated to such an extent that they don't see it they are still in the fog and as long as they're in the fog they're not going to see it and the sad thing is it might be um you know after the relationship ends before they're able to see what happened and the manipu the manipulation the control and the fog but um, again, I, I hope this um, video was helpful. Um, I know narcissistic fog is not a subject that's really um, discussed much, um, but it's very real. And if you speak with people that have come out of a, nar a narcissistic relationship and ask them about being in the midst, midst of that and then kind of the clarity afterwards, I think they'll, you know, they'll agree with me and a lot of other people on the narcissistic fog and how it's um, real. And it, it's something that, um, you know, needs to be dealt with and spoken about more. Thanks.